Today's episode of the WAC Podcast is brought to you by Hercules Tires, the official tire of the Western Athletic Conference. Now here are your hosts, Eric Danner and Rachel Vigil. Welcome to the WAC Podcast, Eric Danner and Rachel Vigil. Our guest today, very special guest, Grand Canyon head men's basketball coach, Bryce Drew. Coach Drew, welcome to the show. Well, thanks for having me back on. It was great being with you. I think it was a month ago, so it's nice to be back. Yeah, it's nice to be back. It's nice to have basketball back, and it's nice to be off to a 3-0 and start, Coach. I got to imagine you got to be pretty happy with how the team started so far. You know what? We definitely are. We've uh, come a long way. Uh, it's, been, it's been a very long preseason getting ready. We had a few setbacks where we couldn't practice, but uh, it's been nice to, to get off to a good start. And the nice thing is we were able to win, but also learn a lot of things that we have to get better at. So anytime that you can win and see the things you have to get better at, that's a good thing. Coach, with you being 3-0 and right now and being obviously you're new to these players, how much do you know about this team right now? You know, it's still definitely a work in progress. Uh, I think each game out, we learn a little bit more. Sometimes you have to go through some adversity or, you know, some – some setback, whether at practice or during the course of a game, uh, to be able to, to build that relationship even deeper and, and see how a player responds under those circumstances. When things are going well, it's easy for, you know, everybody to get along and, and things to go well. But during the course of a game, during the course of a season, you know, there's going to be the, the hills and the valleys. And, you know, you have to be able to stay consistent. You have to be able to, to deal with them and keep moving forward. And um, that's what we're trying to do with some of our practices they've been rather long rather hard you know we're trying to 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 build character you know as we uh get into a tough part of our schedule coming up coach you had four returning starters in alessandro laver javon blackshear mikey dixon oscar frere when you have them coming into a new system how have they been able to adjust you know it's it's difficult you know sometimes you, you get selfish and you think from a coaching standpoint you know, it's a new system and, you know, and it's new to the players, you know, how they're going to respond. And you kind of, you know, look at it one way. But, but you know, I, I definitely understand the, the sacrifices they have made. Um, they've played for other coaches. They've been in different systems. And, you know, they're trying to come in and, and learn ours, you know, in a very short amount of time um, without exhibition games and kind of just being thrown out in the fire. So, you know, I, I think they've done a really good job being coachable. Uh, they've done a really good job, I think, um, trying to pick up what we're trying to teach. And it's just going to be a process. You know, we, we, we hope each month we get a little bit better. We understand our system better. And hopefully our best execution, you know, is coming um, during conference year and conference tournament time. As you take a look at those four, how would you evaluate how their leadership has continued over so far in the beginning of the season? Experience helps. You, you know, you want to have teams that are older. You want to have teams that, that have experience because usually it makes things go smoother. Um, you can progress more rapidly. You can also hopefully respond to setbacks quicker uh, when you're older. So, you know, having their, their experience, Alessandro, you know, has, this is his fourth year in the WAC. You know, Oscar Freyer, you know, it's his fifth year of college. Uh, Javon Blackshear started nearly every game as a freshman. So, you know, we have a lot of experience in those positions. And we will need those as the year goes on, especially as they're trying to adapt to a new coaching staff and a new style. And as we have some new members in the league, you know, we'll be facing some new teams, you know, that, that, that GCU has not faced in the past. We're talking with Bryce Drew, head men's basketball coach at Grand Canyon University. And coach, the one newcomer that's kind of taken the league by storm is Asbjorn Mitgard, a seven-footer transfer out of Wichita State. And this isn't the type of guy we're – we're necessarily used to seeing in the WAC, Coach. He's, he's really built, and he's seven feet tall. And uh, how, how did he arrive at GCU? How were you able to recruit him during the pandemic? You know, um, we had recruited him previously when he came over from Denmark, um, kind of his first time around. So we, we have, we've known who he, who he was for, you know, several years. And, you know, when he hit the portal, you know, we, we, we got on it right away. And, you know, we're able to, uh, to able to show him why we thought this would be a really good fit for him. We thought we had some really good pieces around him, again, with, with Alessandro, another big who can play next to, and then also a point guard who takes care of the basketball very well. So, 
we kind of showed them on paper how we thought, you know, things could work out. And so far, you know, it, it's working out, you know, very well for him, uh, being able to, to feed off of those two uh, to score down low, but then also to rebound the basketball. He's rebounded at an extremely high level. And um, he's a big reason why our team has rebounded the ball so well. Two big games for you this week, Nevada and Arizona State. How do you approach practice? Are you just focusing your minds on uh, Nevada first and then you'll look at ASU, or is it a little bit of both? You know, it's uh, two very good teams. You know, Nevada's already gone and won at Nebraska. Um, obviously, Arizona State, you know, has been top 25 all year. And, um, you know, it definitely has some, you know, NBA draft picks on their team. So, you know, we're taking it again one practice day at a time. Like, like each day we feel there's, you know, a lot of things we have to get better at. And so, you know, first we're, we're preparing for Nevada. And then, you know, then we'll really prepare for Arizona State. But uh, it's going to be a lot uh, of transition, you know, on both teams. Um, they have really good guard play. They really get out in transition. And so that'll be a big part, you know, to the game is us being able to defend them in transition. Coach, the way schedules are this year, they're so fragile. But you've been able to put together a pretty nice one where you have a lot of home games and your only uh, road games before we get into whack play are going to be in Las Vegas. How have you uh, been able to put that schedule together given the circumstances? Hey, you know, this, <laughs> it's been, it's been very hard. Um, you, you know, uh, coach Ryan Lightfoot on our staff, I think he's on the phone, you know, probably five hours a day going over contingency plans, going over cancellations, teams that could play may not be able to play. And then those change, you know, we had one game that we had three teams scheduled within a week. Um, we finally got the third one to, to make it to be able to happen. So, you know, it, it is a constant change and, and, you know, we have an extremely tough stretch coming up, you know, like, like we've told our team, you know, if we get out there and get to practice, it, it, it's a gift that day because you never know, you know, when all of a sudden you're not going to be able to practice or be able to play. So um, it's going to be difficult, but we're so happy to be at home. I think traveling during this time, again, is very hard, especially with obviously what's going on with the virus. So staying home, I think, you know, helps reduce that risk a little bit. Being at GCU Arena, I know it's not a packed crowd with the Havocs and all of the fans like it typically normally would, but what's your first takeaway from your first couple of games there with the limited amount of fans that are there? They are incredible here. So I played six years in the NBA, so I've seen, you know, game, game operations at the highest level, and, and they are incredible here. You know, I put them up against any NBA team, um, even better in some areas as far as the game operations and 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 just the crowd involvement and so even though we can't have all the fans what they've done with the cutouts and you know orchestrating with the band and, and the dance team and cheerleaders and, and the people that we do have in there um i mean it feels like a almost like a regular game and and it gets extremely loud you know still in there so you know i i i give the highest uh respect again to what they do to make these games so fun from a from a spectator standpoint Coach, uh, a lot of basketball fans might remember you from the shot during the NCAA tournament when you were a student athlete at Valparaiso. Went on, as you mentioned, to the NBA, where a first round pick, and then got into coaching at your alma mater, and then at Vanderbilt, got them both to the NCAA tournament. Now at GCU, and uh, the GCU men's basketball coach is a pretty big celebrity in, in the city of Phoenix, especially when you walk down the street. I know it's uh, COVID right now, and a lot of people aren't out on the street, but how do people know you are? Does it kind of depend on maybe how old they are? Uh, yeah, you, you know, um, some people come up and they refer to that that moment in the NCAA tournament, you know, like it was the other day. And then I have to go back and add the years up. And then, you know, I really don't want to want to talk about it when, when I figure out the, the, the years ago that it was. But, you, you know, I, I think one of the things that, um, that makes this job really good is just there's so many good people, you know, especially on our campus. And, and as far as, you know, my standpoint, you know, um, I want to want to be able to recruit really good players, have really good players. And, you know, we want those guys, you know, to be the focal point, you know, um, hopefully, you know, ar around our games. And so um, now, you know, we got some some as Bjorn's doing great. Uh, Javon, Ali, you know, we have some some great young men, I think, that have fabulous stories of their own. So, you know, as a coach, you know, those are what, you know, we put the forefront and we really get those guys uh, hoping to keep building their character and represent GCU you know, how this great school, you know, wants to be represented. Did you know when you were playing that you would want to go into coaching after? You know, I did. Uh, it was my third year in the NBA um, that it really hit me. Uh, I was sitting on the bench and, 
Um, remember, uh, we were playing, and I was next to a player, uh, Brad Miller. Some may remember a guy named Brad Miller, played for Team USA. And um, we were talking about, you know, life after basketball. And, and it really hit me then that, that I could see a lot of the things that needed to be done out on the court. You know, just unfortunately, you know, I, I wasn't able to do it against some of the athletes that the NBA has. And so I thought that I'd be a much better coach than a player. So pretty much my last three and a half years in the NBA, I, I thought more like a coach. And, you know, I kind of approach games almost like a coaching mentality that I could, I could, you know, package that stuff up and then, you know, take it with me uh, when I started coaching. Well, you didn't have to look too far to get coaching advice uh, right there in your family with your dad and your brother. And actually, Josh Hauser, the SAD at Grand Canyon, gave us a really good stat that as a family, uh, the next win by one of the uh, members of the Drew family will be uh, putting you in second place all time in college basketball, uh, passing the Suttons. Of course, Eddie Sutton, the great uh, Oklahoma State Kentucky coach, just passed away this year. Uh, but that has to make you feel pretty good that your family's so well represented in college basketball. You know, my, my, my dad laid a tremendous foundation, I think, for my brother and myself as far as, you know, the, the coaching, you know, aspect. He won over 640 games, um, won it at different levels. And I call it the golden age of coaching because they were educators and, and he was a teacher first and then a coach second. And so, you know, we learned a lot from, from him. Then my brother, obviously, at Baylor, they're, you know, number two in the country. Some have number one right now. Um, has just done an, an incredible job, you know, down there. I'm definitely the low guy on the totem pole. So their <laughs> wins are all up here. I'm just trying to do my, my, my part to help out a little bit so, uh, so we can climb into that second spot. So it might be a race to second, uh, my brother and I, who can help propel us to that spot. So tell me, is there any talks of possibly a GCU-Baylor matchup in the future? You, you know, I, I, I don't know if you guys have brothers and sisters, but <laughs> – it, uh, it's very stressful enough going into a game, let alone if it's going to be your own brother. Um, and it's not so much the game, but I think it's everything after the game that you would have to deal with. So, so we have done private scrimmages um, in the past, and that's been a blast. And, um, you know, hopefully in the future, you know, we can do on the private scrimmages. But we always talk that if we play, you know, we'd like it to be, you know, in the Sweet 16 or the Final Four, you know, not, not in the regular season. Coach, uh, we see over your shoulder a picture of your family, and I, I know it's been a, a tough year to to move, uh, obviously uh, during the pandemic. But now that you're settled in, in Phoenix, what what are your thoughts there? Uh, we love Phoenix. I mean, it's a uh, it's it, it's uh, so beautiful, just the weather, um, the scenery with the mountains, and so this is obviously a vacation spot. People come here for a vacation, so it, it, it's almost like resort living on a on, on a daily basis. And, um, and we just love it. You know, we can't wait till we can get out and actually do more and experience more here. But, um, but so far, you know, it's been, uh, it's been a dream come true for my wife and my son and I, uh, especially with COVID, to be able to play outside every day and, and uh, just enjoy how beautiful this place is. Well, Coach, thanks so much for hopping on with us. We really appreciate it. Well, thank you, guys. That is Bryce Drew, head coach at Grand Canyon University. Coach, best of luck uh, this week, especially against Nevada and Arizona State. Thank you, and look forward to talking to you guys again. All right. Thanks, everybody, for listening to the WAC Podcast. Make sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. And check out our website at WACSports.com.